Ladies and gentlemen, give her and make them feel welcome. This is Appalachian Swing.
We'll get uh, Chase to do. That's Chase Potter on the fiddle right there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, kick a fiddle tune off for you here. Mr. Hart for play. Probably didn't write it. <laughs> well, you know what, Chase? I don't have, I don't have a ghost guy. There you go. <laughs>
steamboats and uh, spent a lot of time on the river, wrote a lot of songs about them. This is one of those. heard was that they hired Dave Bromberg to sit in the control room and tell them to either play the song again or to move on. 
and that was it. And they weren't allowed to hear any of the playback until the album was all recorded, because they wanted to keep it you know, natural, real, loose, messy. <laughs> so we're going for that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't over yet, you know. <laughs> yeah, we uh, most of the time we, we we when we play together, we play Kentucky Colonel's music, and some old and white stuff. And uh, for this one, we we just well, you know what we had to do. We had to work on a set of John Hartford stuff, which wasn't too far off the radar. But I love John Hartford. Many years, a photo of him hung over the mantle in my house, and we moved, and he had to move too. So. <laughs> We're gonna do a fun one here. The key of B. We got stalling. See, there we go. Now we're getting on it. I was stalling so you could change keys over here. And he's so and so enamored with my story that he. Uh, <laughs> I've ever been around. 
So I heard that uh, when uh, quick, somebody else tell a story. I don't three-story house and I wanted want you to build it so so that a hundred people can jump up and down simultaneously in every room of the house and the guy said you want a what and he says I want you to build me a house that's strong enough to withstand a hundred people jumping up and down in every room of the house on every floor at the same time okay we can do that I don't know why you want to do that and he says because we're going to do that that's what we're going to do <laughs> He was notorious for throwing picking parties that would last for days, holiday parties, and just, it's a Tuesday, let's pick, you know? And they'd last for days and days and days, and that would have been fun to have been a part of. I'd have gone for that, for sure. And I heard from, that Tim O'Brien said that, uh, that when Hartford, uh, if you maybe know this or not, Hartford fought with cancer for years, at least 10 years of his life. And, uh, and when it came time that he knew he was going and that was, it was becoming inevitable, he plotted out his funeral, you know? And, he called up people, I want you to sing this at my funeral. I want you to do this at my funeral, and this and that, and everything. And then you're all going to come back to my house, and we're going to have a picking party afterwards. You all will, anyway. And, uh, and they did. They did that. They the funeral, and then they came back to his house. And uh, when they got there, Tim says, when they got there and pulled up the picnic tables and all the stuff set outside, and cases of moonshine with a note from John that read, Ain't nobody leaving till this is all gone. <laughs> he said they pulled it off. They did. <laughs> so we're going to do this pretty number of hits for that.
Nashville lately? Me. <laughs> Do you recognize it? Because it's changing about every 30 seconds down there, and uh, there's many more skyscrapers and more more of those uh, cranes moving everything around. And um, Hartford wrote a number of songs about the, the change and evolution in Nashville around the Grand Ole Opry and uh, that sort of thing. And, uh, I want to do one of those for you right now. This is a number called Nobody Eats Lime Balls Anymore. And if you don't know, the, the land developers down there in Nashville is growing like crazy. And what they'll do is they'll come in and buy a landmark, you know, like Lime Balls or some place like that. And uh, they'll buy it. They'll buy all the stuff that's inside of it, too. And then they'll tear it down and they'll build a high rise. And they'll put uh, like a TGI Fridays type of version of that same thing down on the bottom floor, sort of preserving it, I guess. But, uh, you know stretch but anyway uh, no, nobody eats at lime balls anymore and there's a time where Hartford's talking about here where the Grand Ole Opry had moved out to uh, down near the airport and they built the big old Opry land theme park roller coasters and all that good stuff and uh, instead of it being so much about the music it kind of started to turn into being about the roller coasters and so the vibe and everything changed and downtown just went to pot and vacancy rate went up to like 80 percent or something and the rhyme not touring beautiful mother church you know and went into disrepair and all to the point of being condemned and everything so then the theme park failed after a while and then they went back downtown and said all worked out all right sort of but did you know that nashville is now the uh bachelorette party capital of the world <laughs> i'm not kidding i wish i was i wish i was kidding but i'm not uh -huh. you go down there and you see these little bicycle things with like 12 drunk ladies driving on it and then uh, you better stay out of their way. They'll mess you up. You mess you up. All right.
place tonight. But the people come around and ride the ride. The park shuts up at bedtime. There's no place left to go. Nobody. is bound to do it. This is the girl, this is a girl, this is a song called The Girl I Left Behind. And uh, we're going to couple it up with, uh, make a medley out of it with another song called The Girl I Left Behind. And um, it seems fitting, right? You know, somebody going to name two different songs the same thing. You got to play them together. Absolutely. So that's what this is. How it comes out. The real one. Yeah. Yeah, the old yeah. one. That was our rehearsal right there. Chase's head. <laughs> How does this go again? And we yeah, like this. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play that until after. That's right. <laughs> Weird 
looks from my daughters. It took me a minute to figure out why, but I got there. Well, she jumped in bed and she covered up her head. So I'd never find her, but I knew 